from AM 1430 WBEV, streaming online at dailydodge.com. It is time now for today's community comment. Here's your host, Craig Warmbold. Well, thank you very much and good afternoon. Welcome to Community Comment. On uh, Community Comment today, our guests are with the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater's high school level youth troupe. Uh, we've got a half a dozen uh, actors and actresses who are here with us in our Daily Dodge studios. Uh, and we're going to go uh, two at a time uh, throughout the course of the uh, the next hour before we bring another guest in around 1.30 later this afternoon. Uh, in this first segment, though, uh, in addition to the students, we want to welcome in the, uh, the director of uh, the, the play that we're talking about today. That is uh, Mark Lefebvre. Mark, it's great seeing you again. Yeah, thanks for having us. Looks like you got a good group of kids here. Absolutely. Uh, why don't we introduce uh, two of them right now. Uh, they are Jose Pena to my immediate left and uh, Whitney Steger. Thank you very much for joining me today, guys. The, and the pleasure is all mine, Jose. Uh, the, uh, the play this year, the second year, if I'm not mistaken, of the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater's high school level program uh, is what, Mark? We're doing Footloose. Okay, Footloose. This is the, the classic tale. Classic 80s show. From the 80s. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, goes all the way back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most, most people know it because of uh, Kevin Bacon being in the movie. Mm -hmm. But, uh, no, it was, it was a good show. and look to do something different you know what are the uh, what are the dates of the uh, the program you guys help us out with that at all here at the onset uh, I believe the, our first date can be June 21st yep okay and then we go from Thursday all the way through Sunday okay and then uh, it ends until June July 1st July 1st yep July 1st July 1st so eight two, performances eight over performances. two weekends two Sunday matinees in there somewhere yes. all right eight performances very good uh, you guys already off book and everything like that? yes all right very exciting very exciting now uh, Footloose this is a, uh, a Beaver Dam Mary Community Theater production correct uh, the uh, the high school level stuff hasn't been around too long though you, you were critical in getting this uh, this age group to have their own uh, program mark that makes it sound way more important than it really was That's okay right? well why don't you tell us a little bit about sure. uh, why you did it how you did it and uh, why it's important well I this is my sixth year living in the area. I taught in Columbus for a while. I'm teaching at Beaver Dam now. Um, and my first summer, I did Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat at, um, at Community Theater. And I had students involved. Students from different schools were involved. And I watched those students come together, working together. And it was just a really neat experience. Um, and that was followed up by Wizard of Oz. And the same sort of thing happened again there. And then we did a couple shows that just weren't necessarily the best for high school actors. Not that it, it was... Like they weren't allowed to be in the show or anything. It just we did Man of La Mancha, which is just it's a serious show and it takes a more mature actor and high schoolers weren't really that interested in it. And we followed that up with with Guys and Dolls. And again, there wasn't too many um, too many high schoolers involved. And so my thought was, <clears throat> excuse me, is there a way that I can get high schoolers involved? Being a high school teacher, it's something that I'm thinking about. Um, and you know, seeing those friendships that were forged between you know Beaver Dam, Columbus High School, Wayland Academy, kids were involved early on in those in those shows I was a part of, I was like, is, can I re replicate this in another way? Um, and the idea was to just do a show where the high schoolers can take the lead and be, you know, be the lead characters. You know, when we're doing Wizard of Oz and you're pulling from a whole bunch of different communities, it's hard for these high schoolers, as talented as they are, it's hard for them to compete against adults. You know, their voices just physically are not as developed mm -hmm. um, as some of those lead actors were in those community shows. So this provides them an opportunity and, and brings you know, some fantastic talent. I mean, in the room right now, we've got three Beaver Dam kids, but Sun Prairie, Marquezan, and Mayville. Plus, there's, I think, six other schools that aren't here today. We've got about 10, 11 different schools um, that kids are coming to participate in and, and making friendships. I think it was last weekend, I had nothing to do with it, but the students were like, hey, we're going to go over to hang out at a friend's house in Horicon. You know, they, they're driving, you know, out of town to see each other and uh, make friends. And yeah, I know I was able to go and see these kids different shows um, and I'm looking forward to being able to see more of them in the future you know around in the area not just here in Beaver Dam so I don't know the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater has been around for 50 years, and I think yeah. the elementary and later the middle school portions may be about a little over half that. Uh, there was a real need that you found here at the at the high school level uh, uh, that hadn't been served. Yeah, it's sort of an accidental thing. That wasn't one of my goals initially in setting it up, but I mean, these students, I mean, Jose and, and Whitney here are both graduating seniors, so, you know, next year maybe we can see them in the uh, the community theater show. Um, you know, maybe coming back from college or whatever it may be that they're off to. Oh, I suppose, Whitney, you're, you're headed off to, to basic, so I don't know if you're going to be, uh -oh. <laughs> what your availability is going to be in the summers normally, but, um, 
yeah, you know, we can have them and hopefully they're learning, you know, sort, sort of how things go backstage. I try and get the kids involved. You know, we were set painting for a whole bunch this weekend and building the set and trying to get the kids involved in different ways and, you know, having them own the show. Yeah, you, know? you, don't, you don't really uh, pull any punches with the, the set and the production either. This, uh, this is almost indistinguishable from an adult production, it seems like. The only difference is that there's high school actors. Yeah. One of the coolest things about uh, last year when we did Little Shop of Horrors, the first year that we did it, were people that didn't realize they were coming to a high school production. And I think they sort of felt a little, you know, slighted there. Like, man, I thought this was going to be a full-on production when they walked into the building. And when they left the building, they said, that was just as good, if not better than some, not necessarily at Beaver Dam Area Community Theater, but, you know, community theater productions in general. Um, we, we're aiming, yeah, it's not a it's not a junior production. It's not a cut version. We're not trimming anything down. It's, it's the full show. Just everyone on stage happens to be in high school. Yeah, and again, you're drawing from a, uh, a much larger pool, casting a wider net and getting talent from a number of different communities. Uh, Whitney, in fact, you're from Mayville. Yep. Uh, and you, have you performed here at uh, Beaver Dam Area Community uh, Theater before? No, I've never performed at this theater. You have not? Okay. But you've been in Beaver Dam, though. I think you told, me, you told me you were at the radio station for one of uh, Dan Bell's radio plays. Yeah, a couple years ago, yes, I was. So we might have heard you on the airwaves here before. <laughs> might have. But this is the first time. How did you hear about the play? Um, I got an invite from like an event on Facebook somebody like requested me to maybe try out so I thought I'd give it a shot and just go and try out okay have, have you been doing stuff in Mayville with uh, with school or with Murray players or anything oh, like that in Mayville I do all our schools musicals and I'm in our school show choir and all that music stuff yeah is this your first opportunity to branch out outside Mayville oh yes I, huh. this is the first thing I've done how's it going so far um, I'm having a lot of fun doing this mm -hmm. like I thought like I graduate high school and there's I wasn't sure how many opportunities there would be for me to do like music again so finding things like community theaters is something that I think I might be able to continue doing. Now you are playing who in Footloose? I am playing Ariel Moore. Okay and Ariel Moore uh, can you tell us a little bit about who Ariel is? Um, well she's the lead female in Footloose and she I don't know, she's smart and rebellious and she has lots of different personalities depending on who she's with and it's just a really fun role to play because you're playing kind of more than one type of person. Have you uh, had a role like this before in Mayville? Um, I, my, the biggest role that I think I've had so far was playing Rona Lisa Preddy in the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling <laughs> Bee. <laughs> um, and yeah. So now it is uh, Footloose. There has been a, uh, a more modern version that's been released in the uh, last couple of years, but uh, old timers like Mark and I know this is a 1985 Kevin Bacon movie. Certainly you hadn't been born then. Had your parents even met yet in 1985? <laughs> <laughs> uh, had, had you seen, were you familiar with the, the story at all uh, before auditioning? I, I knew a little bit of the story, but I watched the movie, but not I watched it a long time ago, so I had to rewatch it before I tried out. So, which version of the movie did you watch? The modern version or the, shall we call it classic version, Mark? <laughs> sure. I think it was the modern version. <laughs> All right, very good. Uh, that's except. What were your thoughts of the uh, of the story? Oh, I thought it was really interesting and like. I don't know. It was a cool story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. A uh, bit of a departure. I mean, this is a musical version of the uh, uh, of the classic story. We'll say, right? Yeah, it's there's the music is similar. Like, I'm trying to remember. It's been a while since I watched the movie. I I try and watch watch productions of it. Um, sometimes movies, sometimes other theater productions. I try and watch that, and then step away from it because I don't want to be too terribly influenced when I'm directing, you know, I don't want to, you know, say, uh, Jose is playing Ren, I don't want to say, Jose, I need you to be Kevin Bacon right now, the whole, you know, that's, <laughs> that's not what we're looking for, you know, we're, we want to make our own version of the show, so I can't remember all the things, but um, I, a lot of the songs that are in the movie are also in the stage production, they've just found a way to weave them in, in a relatively, like, I don't feel like they're forced in, in any way either, like, it doesn't, um, um, Aaron, who you'll, you'll, will be on here later. She sings um, uh, Let's Hear It For The Boy, which mm -hmm. I don't think it's sung by anybody in the show. It's just sort of, um, you know, there's a mo montage going on, but, you know, we've got a reason for her to sing the song mm -hmm. um, and that sort of thing. So, like, so it's there, but unfortunately things like the tractor scene, if I can, if people know <laughs> what I'm talking about when I say the tractor scene, right? Um, we can't do that 
like we're on a stage. We don't, we can't get two tractors to be going at each other <laughs> on stage. Um, I feel like every time I come, or at least the last couple of times, like Craig, you'll be teasing me about that sort of thing. Like, why doesn't the car fly off into the distance <laughs> at the end of Greece? It's like, uh, it's hard enough to get a car on stage, let alone fly one off into the distance. And we can't have tractors running into each other. Now there are good FFA groups at all of their high schools. I'm sure they would have gotten <laughs> two tractors onto the stage for you oh, man, if we would have tried, Mark. We're, we're, we're downtown at <laughs> Spring Street. It's pretty tiny. I don't, we wouldn't be able to do any acting. There would just be two tractors on stage. And, and, and you know, that's a good point. You are at the, uh, the Spring Street location and for uh, a lot of the, the Beaver Dam kids who have grown up uh, at the, the community theater and even for some of those from the other communities who may have seen productions, this is kind of the last summer production that's going to be at that this, facility. Yeah, this is it's the last. We're, we're wrapping it up here. Um, I think we got five more shows overall. Um, we're, we're doing the high school show. The middle schoolers are doing Susical Junior. We've got the elementary kids doing We Are Monsters. The main stage show is Anything Goes, and I think we've got your good man Charlie Brown is going to be the last one, and then kicking it off at the new facility and if you i mean follow follow us on facebook because there are some cool videos and and pictures of all the construction that's going on there i know a fraction of what's going on but it's it's gonna be cool you're on the board too aren't you i am they've only told you a fraction mark there is so much that's going on like yeah i think i know what's going on and then all of a sudden like oh now there's a whole new floor of the building not quite that dramatic but so let's talk a little bit about this uh, uh, this idea of Footloose, because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, traditionally in the theater, we see, we've we seen, and I don't want to generalize too much, but you've seen maybe stage uh, books turn into stage productions with Little Shop of Horrors. Maybe this is a, a good example of a, of a movie that kind of gets turned into a musical later on, but that's not the traditional theater as we know it. This is kind of, seems like almost a newer kind of uh, avenue it's, in the theater. It's, it's definitely a trend. I mean, if you look at the... Uh the Tony Awards that happened this past weekend. Um, there was Mean Girls and uh, SpongeBob the Musical and uh, what's the other one? Frozen were three of the four best uh, Tony nominees uh, for this year. So, um, and then of course the winner was the other one. Uh, it was a show <laughs> the called The Band's one. Visit. Yeah, yeah, the more traditional show, you know, written on its own. Um, you know, I mean, there's a there's a show out there that I like, and they uh, they say one of the characters says, so movies make good musicals. And the response is, well, they make musicals. Um, <laughs> but I, I, you know, I think Footloose hit, hit they, they did a good job with Footloose. Like they, they found their, they found a good place for it. Um, and I think Little Shop too, you know, it's, it takes all the good parts of the movie and puts it on stage and puts it together in a cohesive manner. And I, I think the show's got a good message with it too. Um, I'm, I, I'm always hesitant to talk about my, my personal feelings on it, but I feel like the show talks about you know, the importance of listening to what children are saying. And you know, I feel like that's a common thing that's sort of going on in politics and, and stuff. And I don't, I don't want to dig into that too much. But, you know, I think a lot of adults, we just sort of dismiss kids. They don't, they don't know what they're talking about. But, um, you know, you don't have to do everything that a kid suggests, but at least, you know, listen to what they're saying. Give, it, give them a thought there. So, Whitney, Jose, when you guys are uh, working on your acting skills at the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater and the, uh, the director tells you to do one thing and you suggest something else, does, does he ever uh, listen to what it is you're saying and incorporate that and, and, and you know, maybe uh, do exactly what it is that you were just saying that uh, you learned from Footloose? Yeah, well, I say he definitely takes up suggestions. If I'm thinking something, I'll t maybe tell him and he'll tell me, try it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then we'll find something else. Jose, you would agree with that? I definitely agree with that, yeah. Well, Mark, it looks like you passed the first test. <laughs> and, and, you know, that's important, when you're, especially when you're working with kids, but I imagine when you're working with all age groups, there's got to be a give and take as a director. Oh, right. I mean, I don't think anybody would want to work with a director who is, it is only this way. Mm -hmm. Like, you must do this every time or you are wrong. Um, but yeah, yesterday we were starting to really um, add costumes to the show and Whitney was like, well, this costume doesn't make sense right now. I'm in front of my parents. Why would I be wearing this costume? Um, she, like she said, she's rebellious. Um, so, you know, the, the red cowboy boots and, and the, <laughs> the shorter shorts, um, definitely not something she's gonna be hanging out around her uh, reverend father with so um were you able to find a pair of red cowboy boots uh, in oh, the uh, it, it bowl, like, deep in the bowels of the community theater no, uh, costume we, room we couldn't find them but we um had some i got a contact on at wauwatosa west high school and he was like yep we've got them and i was like please be size nine please be size nine and they were wow and they, they work right like yeah, they, work. I, they, they look good on stage so so far so good out. 
Uh, Ariel is playing uh, the uh, the lead, or excuse me, Whitney's playing the lead of Ariel. Uh, Jose Pena is playing the lead of Ren. Uh, that's the, uh, again, what we know as the Kevin Bacon role. Right. Uh, then it was played by somebody else. Have you seen the movie, the original movie that this is based on? Yes, yes, I did. And your thoughts, Jose? Uh, definitely different, a little different from the musical. Okay. Um, just a couple elements, of course, the tractor and everything. So you're more familiar with the musical than you are with the movie. Yes. Going into this, you were more familiar with the musical. Yeah, uh, when I, when, at least when I first auditioned, all I knew when I when I went in was uh, that it was somewhat like Grease. So I'm like, <laughs> all right, let's do it. I'll, I'll give it a shot. And... <laughs> Rebellious High Schoolers, Perfect. yeah. I suppose. There you go. I guess. Kinda... Well, when is the what year? What era is this set? This one's set in the eighties. It is set it in the nineties. Yeah, it was, I'm specific it was to contemporary that. Contemporary when they came sure, out initially, sure. so so we left it there. So tell us a little bit about uh, Ren and your approach to playing this. You know, it's kind of an iconic character with a certain age demographic. Well, uh, he's a Chicago kid thrown into a uh, small town of Beaumont, which nobody's heard of, <laughs> and um, uh, very witty, uh, pretty childish. Not, I, yeah, pretty childish, um, <laughs> funny, definitely trying to fit in into Beaumont and uh, just trying to make the place work, I guess. You know, I could see that there is a lot of crossover between a character like Danny Zuko in Greece and Ren in, in Footloose. How do you separate them when you're on the stage? Uh, there, there is a lot of crossover there, it seems like. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, definitely Danny's definitely more rebellious and uh, I think more bad than uh, uh, Ren is, but uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you got a, you, have you got a favorite musical number in uh, in Footloose? Uh, I think the funnest one definitely going to be I Can't Stand Still. It's uh, like Lefebvre says, uh, a hidden gem inside that yeah. musical, but uh, definitely very fun to sing and also dance to. Now, would that be one of the more original numbers that comes out? If I remember right, that okay. one's not in the movie, but it's like it's one that just it gets stuck in my head. I don't know about anybody else, but it gets stuck in my head. And um, you know, the, the, we we set up this whole town that's not allowed to dance. I, who doesn't know the plot of Footloose? But yeah. if you don't know the plot of Footloose, the, the town of Beaumont—they're not allowed to dance. It's against the law. Um, so we sort of set up this. Um, this town of no one's allowed to dance and they're all kind of rigid and I don't know stuck up about it and then you know the Chicago kid comes in and he just has like a minute and a half two minutes of singing like crazy and dancing like crazy and everyone's just shocked and awed at like oh my goodness what is going on right now and and Jose sells it too like he just goes for it um so boy Chicago kids coming in and shaking things up huh uh sounds like an interesting story for a movie uh so so you've got so you come in and you shake things up, mm -hmm. and uh, you get to uh, work with Ariel. This is the first time the two of you have worked together. Yes. Uh, do you guys have uh, 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 songs that you guys share on stage together? Duets, anything like yes. that? Yes. Yeah. We sing yeah. a duet. What's uh, what song is that? It's uh, Almost Paradise. Almost Paradise. Right. Now this is uh, this is one that the '80s uh, uh, trigger is going off in, in right. me. I remember that one. Yeah. So there's and there's gonna be so much nostalgia for my demographic for this I stuff. Hope isn't so. there? Well, it, that's you know, I that's certainly kind of hope the idea, so. right? Next, yeah, we're hoping to hoping to bring in that that age group. Why not? Do, do you guys uh, have you gained a new appreciation for the '80s, which were what 20 years before any of you were born? Yeah, yeah, that definitely. That's that's kind of I don't. I'm not feeling it. I, it's, it's, it seems forced, but that's okay. You guys are actors, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Um, what uh, uh, we're going to kind of wrap up this segment, and bring some of your uh, uh, your colleagues up here on the program. Uh, but before we do, if you could, uh, Jose, tell us, uh, tell our listeners why they should uh, check out Footloose at the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater uh, for one or more of the eight performances between June 21st and July 1st. Oh man, I think if if you were to come. Definitely, uh, uh, <laughs> put him on the spot. Yeah, yeah, he said, you are off book, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. right. I just want to make sure. Uh, good, good opportunity to get the, get the listeners out there. Yeah. What is it, Jose? Uh, out of, well, out of, unfilled. <laughs> <laughs> singing and dancing? I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely come for the singing and dancing. It's, <laughs> honestly, one of the more, more funner musicals I've, uh, been a part of, and, uh, it's going to be a blast. Fantastic. Very good. Uh, Whitney, we're putting the same question to you. <laughs> I'd say come out and check out all of the talent because there's people from everywhere, all different types of people, just all coming together to put on a show, and we're all having fun together, full of energy, lots of fun. 
All right. Well, fantastic. Now, did I get this right from uh, Mark? You're, you're uh, going into basic training this summer, so we're probably not going to see you at the uh, community theater next summer, maybe? Uh, maybe not next summer, but I'll try and try to work out with my schedule to see what I can do. Well, fantastic. Congratulations uh, to you and uh, your future endeavors, and you're a senior as well, Jose. Yep. Uh, congrats. Will we maybe see you here on the stage uh, going forward? Yeah, I think so. Well, we're looking forward to that opportunity. We want to thank you for joining us in this segment. Uh, once again, that is Jose Pina. He is playing Ren. Whitney Steger is... Steger? Steger. Steger. Oh, sorry. Uh, Whitney Steger is playing Ariel in Footloose, Beaver Day Mary Community Theater, Jul uh, June 21st through July 1st. More information at bdact.org. We do have to take a break. We'll be back in just a few minutes. From AM 1430 WBEV, streaming online at dailydodge.com. Time for more of today's community comment. Here again is your host, Craig Wormbold. There in a minute. And uh, welcome back to Community Comment. We continue our conversations uh, with the uh, students and uh, director of the Beaver Dam Mary Community Theater's high school level summer production of Footloose. Uh, joining uh, director Mark Lefebvre and I here on this segment are actresses Savannah Peterson and Erin Millville. Thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Thank you. Yes. So now, um, Savannah, we'll start with you. Yes. Savannah. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, Savannah, sorry. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Marcus Am. It's about 35 minutes away from here. How'd you hear about this production? I actually found out about it last year. I was in the production Little Shop last year. Okay. And I found out about it because the new choir director that came to Marcus Am actually went to school with Mark in college. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Small world. Right, well, yep. Now, who is that? Uh, Kate Cuddle, but she recently got married, and a Wagner, Wagner. is her new yes. last name. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, the, uh, what, I think I was actually like an RA in the building she was in <laughs> when I was a senior. So she was younger than me, and then graduated, got that, that gig, and I was like, hey, make sure that you got kids coming over. And got a good one with Savannah. And, and Kate oh, talked to you. you. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> Kate talked to you and said, hey, I think you'd be good for this? Yeah, she picked like two or three of us in... Marcus Ann, who she thought were very into theater and could handle it because it's a 35 minute drive. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to be really reliable, really responsible in order to do a show like this. And she basically said, I think that it would be amazing for you to kind of spread out your wings and go to other theaters and find other directors. Just because in Marcus Ann, it's very small. Musicals is not something that people do. It's a sportsy yeah. town, very okay. small. Like, my high school has like 230 people in it. Okay, yeah. So did you, yeah. have you been, have you been in uh, plays before, though, in Marcus Inn? Or are there yes. are there those offerings there that yes. you've been able to participate in? Yeah, I've been doing productions since I was in sixth grade. And then I actually branched out a little bit my freshman year, and I went to the Green Lake Opera House, cool. if you know sure. that at all. And they do some productions. So I did a couple there, and then I found out about Beaver Dam, and I've been coming here since. <laughs> so you are playing Wendy Jo. Yes, I am. Uh, now, uh, tell us a little bit about who Wendy Jo is. Okay, Wendy Jo is one of Ariel's best friends, and we're like this little mean girls posse. There's four of us, <laughs> and we kind of run the school. Like, I definitely oh. would say that when we walk in, everyone, like, kind of gets out of the way because we're in charge, and I personally am the sweet and put-together one. I'm also <laughs> a little ditzy. Oh. So uh -huh. <clears throat> is that fun to play? It, oh, it is very fun to play. I've never played a character where I get to be the ditzy one. So it's a very interesting new thing for me, and it's expanding my acting <laughs> skills. So I love it. Uh, do you get an opportunity to sing? I do. Yes, I have a couple solos throughout it. We have a lot of trio singing mm -hmm. between Rusty, Arlene, and myself, and that's a lot of fun because mm -hmm. I really love the girls. We do a lot of backups for Ariel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Holding out for a hero. And oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have a favorite song? My favorite song, I'm actually not in my favorite song. My favorite song is Mama Says, and Willard sings it, and I just love it because it is so much fun it to is. watch. And the guy who plays Willard has a fantastic voice, which I didn't know until this year. So it's pretty cool that is, way. Is he, is he here? He's not. He's not oh, here. No. Gavin, um, if you're, if Gavin, if you're listening. Gavin, if you're listening. <laughs> Gavin, if you're listening. Yeah, work right now. It's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, well, that's, you know, I mean, it's okay to have a favorite song that you're not in. Yes, I completely agree. Have you seen the original 80s yes, movie? Yes, I have not seen the modern one. Okay. I've only seen the original. Good for you. I like Good for the you. original, and I don't want to see the yeah. original. Yeah. <laughs> No, you had seen it though before this whole yes. uh, rehearsal and everything like that. This is actually one of like my favorite like movies when I was growing up. How does that happen? I am like like an old 
old soul. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine living in a community where dancing is not allowed? No. I think that's why it's such a fun musical to be in is because, like, I'm not a huge dancer. I'm not, like, strong at dancing, but I couldn't imagine not being able to, like, bop around to a song. Like, that to me is just insane. Now, uh, uh, Mark said that there's an educational component of this uh, of this uh, uh, level, high school level, at the Beaver Dam Mary Community Theater. Have you have you been learning stuff? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you tell what what kind of takeaways have you had from this experience so far? Well, the productions that like the Beaver Dam Community Theater does are a lot larger scale than what Markazan can pull off. Like we just don't honestly have the budget to do bigger productions, and we don't have the space to do bigger productions, like. We do a lot of junior shows, which being in high school, that really sucks because I don't get to get that experience that most other people get to have, especially, you know, I'm a senior this year, I'm graduating, so it's hard to continue to do productions that are minimal. And so it's nice to come to a place where I can get that wide scale, large production. Have, have you been to the Beaver Dam Community Theater before this experience? Yes, I was in Little Shop last year, but okay. that was the first production that I had. Okay. Have you, have you had you seen productions from the audience perspective? No, I have not. Maybe. I went and I just auditioned and I got cast and I was like, all right, well, I hope this is good. I'll get in. <laughs> is, this, uh, is this a good opportunity maybe for folks in Marquezan to learn about the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater and maybe bring a, a few folks into the community that uh, hadn't planned on being here before? Yes, I think that it's a very good opportunity and if you have a chance and even an interest in theater or anything and you don't mind driving, I'd recommend coming here because I've learned so much and I've developed so many amazing relationships with people that I don't think are going to die off even though I won't be in the high school (laughs) next year. Uh, We might see in a future production? I hope so, yes. All right. Uh, Erin Melville. Hi. How are you? I'm doing swell. How about you? Oh, (laughs) beyond swell. Oh, wonderful. Uh, Another old soul here, apparently. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Now, you are joining us from what community? Uh, I'm from Sun Prairie. Wow, Sun Prairie. How did you hear about this Beaver Dam Community Theater? production? Uh, well, I've always sort of had ties to the Beaver Dam area. My dad teaches in the district. He's a fifth grade teacher. Oh. Hey, Mr. Melville, if you're listening, he's <laughs> teaching summer school right now. Okay. Uh, so I knew that it was a thing, you know, the, com- the community theater. Uh, I saw, uh, what was it, Wizard of Oz? I got to see Wizard of Oz and I was blown away. I loved it. Um, and last year I heard that they were doing Into the Woods and uh, I got to play Little Red at Into the Woods. So. Oh. Yeah, so I sort of have that background. Do, do you have a, a, a background in Sun Prairie? They've got a community theater there. That's they do. Uh, I did Oklahoma Junior. I played Aunt Eller as a, you know, 14-year-old because, of course. Uh, sure. Yeah. But I've done stuff um, in Oregon, uh, Oregon Straw Hat Players. That's sort of where I got my start. And then I've been in uh, Lake Country Playhouse as well, which is in Heartland in the Milwaukee area. So we... We've been driving around for a long time. <laughs> You've had a lot of different opportunities, it sounds like. I've and, been very fortunate. Uh, how has the Beaver Dam experience stacked up so far? It's wonderful. I mean, it's like coming home to something. Last year, uh, for Into the Woods, I auditioned uh, via a video audition, which is always a bit you know, sketchy because you <laughs> don't see the people you're going to work with and you don't experience where you're going to be working. Uh, but you, know, you walk through the doors, and you know, it's a wonderful experience. Uh, video auditioning? Is this, uh, you know, in the modern era, there's all different ways to skin a cat, it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, we, um, for auditions for this show, we ran into a snowstorm the weekend of, mm-hmm. so there was a oh, couple wow. kids that mm-hmm. ended up sending in a video. Um, it's not ideal, and then we were gonna, we had callbacks planned for the next day, and it was still uh-huh. just a whole That's bunch of snow, so so we bumped, we were able to bump that back. It worked in everyone's schedule, but... And that was May 26th. <laughs> <That> was, <laughs> yeah. was, I mean, it was a late late snow. No, nah, not quite that bad, but... No, we the... It was last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was that one week, though, and it just, like, it was snowing on Monday, and it was, like, nice shorts weather yeah. by Friday. Yep. Wisconsin, I tell you. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. But no, yeah, it's... This is indoors. This is an indoor right. production. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Don't throw that. Not indoors. Well, if, if the roof stays on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, but yeah, video auditions, you know, if you got to do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Aaron was actually like on the fence about it because I was driving. I think you were working on a show in Oregon, right? And you were uh, yeah, I was working on Lay Miz for their high school. I was doing props for that. that so weekend. that was going on while she was trying to audition in the morning in the midst of a snowstorm. So she was like, <laughs> if I have to, can I do a video audition? I was like, and then I saw the dance component and I said, 
No, we'll, we'll risk it. We'll just go. Uh, the year before for Into the Woods, I feel like I speak on behalf of a lot of the high school students here to say that, you know, our schedules are so full of commitments that I remember writing to the director, Ryan. Uh, I was like, I'm very interested. You don't know who I am, but I cannot make either of the auditions or the callback. So here's a video. Let me know what's happening. Oh, Thanks. Wow. And, and Ryan, this Ryan Klug we're talking mm -hmm. about, yes. he, uh, uh, that worked. Apparently. That's wonderful. <laughs> So tell us about uh, Rusty. Do I do I remember Rusty from the uh, from the movie? Well, I can't. I shouldn't ask you what I remember, you but yeah, I should. Uh, she was played by Sarah Jessica Parker oh, in the movie. Okay. Right, yeah, she good. had the bangs and the jeans and <laughs> just fashion icon. Um, <laughs> um, but I would call Rusty. She's sort of a hopeless romantic. She's grotesquely optimistic about how you know she's had a crush. The plot is her through line is that she's had a crush on this guy Willard for the longest time. Uh, Ariel has a line where it's like, You've, you two have been weird since kindergarten together. Uh, and it's, <laughs> it's very personal for me because I don't have to go that far to really dig into that character because I've definitely felt that <laughs> before. Uh, you know, she waves at him in the hallway and he just goes the other direction. And that's been... And we actually <laughs> have that boy here today. If you didn't oh, know that. No. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Uh, so... <laughs> so um, uh, so, uh, uh, you uh, do you have a favorite uh, uh, favorite song in uh, in this? Well, I, I'm fortunate to, fortunate enough to sing "Here for the Boy," which has always had a special place in my household because my mom talks about how that was the number one song when she was in college. Mm -hmm. Hey, mom, uh, she went to Viterbo, and uh, she always jokes that she called into the radio station to request it, and she got to you know do the intro to it, and she always said. Hey, this is Susan Cooper, and I'm requesting to hear Let's Hear for the Boy, because we have no boys at Viterbo University. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever I sing it, it's just a cool, special connection. Plus, it's probably the most challenging song I've ever sung. That is a huge song. I mean, again, it's, I was alive as the only one here who was alive in the 80s, with tech, except for the seven months that you uh, made it. Uh, that I mean, doesn't count. I heard that all the time on yeah. the radio, and that is a huge voice that is behind that song. And you're, and that's coming out of you <laughs> on a good day. <laughs> <laughs> now, how old are you? Uh, I'm 17. 17. So uh, you've had a little bit of experience singing, then it sounds like. Just a tad. Okay. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm an alto <laughs> by definition, but we're definitely reaching up. Uh, at the end of the song, I'm not trying to spoil anything here, but there's some whistle tones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. The thing that like is, just bugs me about Aaron. She doesn't have time in her schedule for choir. Like oh, she has hard. this super okay. super talented voice, oh, and like it, she knows she, she knows how talented she is. Um, <laughs> she's super humble about it, but she is a talented kid. Um, but she's so fantastic. Um, she, doing the um, the we we partner with the, the Overture Center. We do this thing called the Jerry Awards. She's a part. They've got a special ensemble of what twenty some voices, just mm -hmm. just about twenty. Just she's about. a part of that. Um, just got. Is it public that you just got cast in Sun Prairie? Show? Sure. I mean, I mean if you want not? something to do in the fall, come on and check out Pajama Game at Sun Prairie but High School. She, she got the lead in that. I mean, and it's not like she's not doing choir because she doesn't want to. you taking AP courses upon AP courses and um, in band and, like, super involved. But just, like, it blows my mind. Like, if I knew this kid was in my school and wasn't in choir, I would be like, what is going on? So, well, and it speaks, again, to the talent that you're drawing from right. the multiple communities that are part of this uh, production. And if Little Shop of Horrors is any indication, you really get that all kind of uh, right onto the stage at one time that, and that's pull what it off. For. I mean, take the, take the best and brightest and... Um, and I say that, but like I, I don't cut people from these shows either. Like I'm drawing in these talented kids. It's not like and that. they're very talented. Yeah. I, I uh, because I've been so busy, I got out of school before a lot of the other kids did. After a bunch yeah. of the other <laughs> kids did. <laughs> Reverse, my one. bad. Yeah, uh, this is my second day off. Uh, but they've been so helpful in learning choreography. There's been days, you know, where I have to play graduation. I have to play tuba at graduation. Yeah, uh, and right tuba, wow. of course, of course tuba. <laughs> and you're Why gonna not? bang out a drum solo for us later. Is that I mean, what, uh, is that what we if understand? we're lucky, <laughs> we have time. Uh, Aaron, if you would tell our listeners why they should make it a point to check out the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater's high school level production of Footloose for any one or more of the eight performances between June 21st and July 1st. Um, if you want to see a bunch of kids just having a blast on stage, it really pushes us to 
uh, find our character and identify with people that we probably wouldn't identify with. You know, these are uh, teenagers of the 80s. And sometimes I feel like there's a barrier, a time gap between, you know, uh, my mom was a teenager when Footloose came out and I'm a teenager now. And we shop for uh, Gloria Vanderbilt jeans the other day at uh, Goodwill. And it was just a bonding experience. So I think the moral of the story is universal and it's all about finding your own voice. And, you know, that's a question that I really haven't asked our guests today is about that fashion component. You oh, already yes. explored that. I'm, I love it. Uh, I'm wearing, uh, I brought them from home, but I have a pair of Guess overalls. Guess, wow. Yeah. That's the 80s written all over them. Yeah, $7 at Goodwill. <laughs> Loving a good find. How about Wendy Jo? What is Wendy Jo? Uh, are you shopping specially for this 80s kind of uh, fashion Not opportunity? Not quite. We actually just changed my costume as of yesterday. <laughs> so we don't know what I'm wearing. We've got some time. Well, yeah, it'll work so out. we got to figure that out. <laughs> it'll be 80s theme, though. Right. I'm sure. Definitely. No oh, doubt yes. about that. Uh, Aaron, if you would leave our Nope, sorry. Savannah, if you would yes. leave our listeners with your thoughts about why they should check out Footloose. Well, a little biased, but I would come and see it. But <laughs> <For that. laughs> I think that the show is full of fun, and I think that when you're in the audience, there is never going to be a dull moment because there is always something fun going on, and there's always something to look at and be like, oh, okay, that's happening. All right. <laughs> There's a lot of moments like that in there. So, if you want to be wowed, definitely come and see Footloose because we have some really talented people and some very large voices that need to be heard. It's Footloose, June 21st through July 1st at the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater Building. That's the one on North Spring Street. Uh, and it's uh, the, the, almost the last uh, handful of productions that are going to be at the, uh, uh, the classic facility, we'll call it, oh before, the, before the new facility, <laughs> modern facility, comes around. Uh, our guests uh, on this segment want to thank uh, Savannah Peterson and Aaron Millville. Uh, we do have to take a break. When I come back, uh, when Mark and I come back, uh, we'll have uh, the final two uh, actors uh, that are part of Footloose here on Community Comment. <laughs> From AM 1430 WBEV, streaming online at DailyDodge.com. Time for more of today's community comment. Here again is your host, Craig Warmbull. And our guests are with the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater production of Footloose. It's the high school troupe that's putting on the program. Uh, eight shows between June 21st and July 1st. Mark, the ticket price? Uh, between 10 and $14, based on where you want uh, where you want to sit. Um, we're trying something new with this production since it is a high school show. If you are a student um, and you show up the night of, if you bring eight bucks, we'll give you any seat that's available. But that's only, you know, that's if there are seats available. We'd, of course, love to hope that we're going to pre-sell out every show. But we're doing an $8 student rush. If you bring your student ID, um, it'll be any seat that's available. So yeah, and that's kind of uh, become a popular thing in the theater. I, that's I mean, it's not a, just Beaver Dam. Yeah, that's uh, I think it's the first time that Beaver Dam's trying this, but um, yeah, that's that's around. I mean, I think the Overture Center will even do, you know, mm -hmm. any seat that's available. You can get them. I mean, for a discount. So um, since it's students on stage, um, and we want <coughs> kids to be able to see each other, you know, performing. I know there's some that have got like trips to Europe planned out. Actually, I'm yeah. sending them on a trip to Europe. Um, and they were in the show last year, and they, you know, I want them to be able to see it, but they also have to save money for that expensive trip to Europe. Sure. I just assume all high school students who aren't in <laughs> in my show are going to Europe. Europe, right? yeah. yeah. Backpacking, I'm sure. Right, exactly. Or something. <laughs> Uh, our, 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 I don't know if our next guests will be backpacking across Europe. At least they won't uh, in the month of uh, June. I uh, want to welcome into the uh, the program here Annie Friedel and Nathan Stafford. Thank you very much for joining us today, guys. Very welcome. And now um, I'll ask the both of you guys together, who is it that you guys play? Uh, I play Vi Moore. And I play her husband, Shaw Moore. Okay. And now uh, you're uh, immortalized by the the great John Lithgow in the 1985 yes. movie uh, Footloose. And uh, Vi, I, I apologize. I, may... I don't know either. So yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and I don't feel so bad. Uh, but you guys uh, are playing a married couple. Mm -hmm. You guys have known each other for a while. Yes. Since sixth grade, actually. Since sixth grade, and you guys are uh, We're juniors? Gonna be juniors. You're going to be juniors, mm -hmm. and you've been in a couple productions together. Yeah, so we were in, uh, you weren't in Alice, no, no that but was we, were in, we were in Music Man and High School Musical Junior, and then most recently we were both in Nevermore, uh, the Edgar Allan Poe mystery. Okay, all right. Pretty very much good. almost every show since sixth grade. <laughs> is, that, is that right? Wow. You know, so did you notice that when the, the two of them uh, were together that they've kind of already had this uh, this time together and they might have this 
you know, it wasn't it wasn't a for like in the forefront of my mind when we were casting the show. I mean, I see the kids individually when mm-hmm. when we audition. I don't see them in groups or anything. So, um, it wasn't something that was, you know, like oh, I need to put these two because mm-hmm. they have, I know that they know each other and they'll be comfortable. It wasn't. Sure. It was sort of an after the fact, like oh, that'll be good. Like mm-hmm. you know, they, they know each other. They'll be able to work on things and it's been these two have been fantastic to work with because they'll i'll give them half an idea and they will go and fully bake that idea and okay we got three different ideas about how to play this idea so you know over a couple nights i'll see a couple different things and um so what you're saying is you're just that good i'm just that good okay. that i can give them a little something and they make it into a big something <laughs> annie tell us a little bit about uh, vi uh vi is quiet and reserved but she has her own ideas that she can't share. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's a lot of learning to be silent. (laughs) That's that's one of the songs in the show. (laughs) It's learning to be silent. And you get to sing that? Uh, Part of a trio, yeah. As part of a trio. Have you had a lot of opportunities uh, to uh, to sing in your time in theater? Yes, uh, since third grade. Since third grade. (laughs) Now, did you start uh, the Telltale route and everything like that? So when you started, uh, there was the uh, the elementary school Telltale level, and then you went into the middle school level, and it was getting to be there that it looked like, well, there'd be only, uh, you know, regular school year opportunities, and then comes along Mark Lefebvre. He was our choir director, and I think you saw, like, how much we all love theater. Yeah, yeah, like, there's there's a a talent for it. Um, And, I mean... I, I feel like I'm giving praises to all these kids, but they are totally justified. Um, we are sitting at the table with two award-winning actors. <laughs> um, this past weekend, there was the, the Jerry Awards. We, I talked about them earlier, but um, Annie and Nathan both won for their portrayals in Greece. Um, Annie oh. as, as Marty, and then uh, Nathan played Teen Angel. Um, <laughs> so they, what? <laughs> it's, it's a true fact, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but no, they- Marty Maraschino? Yes. Is that who? Okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, you would have been the host. Uh, Frankie Valley. Frankie Valley. Oh, yeah, Frankie right? Valley from the the Beauty Frankie Frankie Frankie. Yeah. One, one of the Frankies. One, oh, Frankie. That is um, the only way that people remember who I was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frankie. You're Frankie. Right, but they uh, the so they both won awards um, for their outstanding supporting roles. Um, so that's you know there's it's the show is filled with talent. It's a so w- what is the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater meant to you in terms of having the opportunity now at these different age levels to kind of grow with the programs that they've got there and, and learn, uh, you know, some of the things that uh, uh, mentors like Mark here have been able to show you? Um, I think that um, Annie and I and really a lot of our Beaver Dam high schoolers are really fortunate to have a community theater because... Um, I was not like Annie. I didn't start doing Teletail until I was in sixth grade, and I was half forced by my uh, choir teacher, Mrs. Bordak. But um, so kind of going along um, all the way from sixth grade to now, we're going to be 11th graders next year, and just kind of following the course, and like slowly over time, you get better and better roles. So when I started out, I did Alice in Wonderland and I was the caterpillar. So I had about one solo and two <laughs> scenes. And now being Shaw Moore, um, I have a couple different solos and I'm in a lot more scenes and I have a lot more interactions with characters. So being able to like really grow and flourish in that environment has been very good for yeah. me. Yeah. And I love theater uh, so much. I started in third grade and I knew that I loved it, even though I'd never like seen a show performed i just knew that i was gonna love it and i still do (laughs) yeah so um so nathan you play the reverend shaw moore again kind of immortalized by the great actor john lithgow uh tell us about uh about the reverend shaw moore so um if anyone's ever seen footloose the movie i'm not quite that strict so just want to point that out in case you're having hesitations um but yeah, he's a very strict parent, and the interesting thing about Shaw Moore is you don't learn it until a bit later in the show, but he used to be a lot softer and a kinder man, but it was, am I, can I, can I keep going? I mean, I feel like people know the oh, story okay. of Footloose. Oh, I don't think like anyone's going to really be that year old movie. If you've right. ever seen Footloose, you can just plug your ears, but um, <laughs> So you later find out that he really became this stern and solid man after the death of his son because he really had no other way to cope with his feelings other than just saying, we're going to band dancing and rock music and all of these crazy teen adventures because 
he, instead of dealing with his problems, he wanted to hide them down mm -hmm. and just kind of put like a blanket uh, issue over it. Yeah, he well, never it, healed. It, it, and it might be, I mean, these are the sort of conversations, like we will have these conversations, you know, while in a break during rehearsal, like these are the sort of things. But I mean, is that is part of the reason that Reverend Moore is, doesn't cope is because he had to help everybody else cope. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's not that he wanted to become the stern angry man. He felt the need to take care of everybody else before he took care of himself and so didn't let himself cope. And mm -hmm. Nathan, do you, do you think you play a jerk? <laughs> sure. <I'll, laughs> I, think, I think I play a man who he doesn't really realize how, how um, like hard he has become because um, it kind of just happened slowly enough that he's just become used to it. And, you know, my wife makes so many protests all the time and my own daughter uh, ends up resenting me because I'm really the only one who doesn't notice how hard and stern I've become. What role does Vi play in, in that evolution of his character? Uh, she is always supportive, always patient, um, and then when an event happens, <laughs> I'm not gonna... <laughs> That's right. uh, is she, it the tractor race? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Right, once, once the tractor race happens. <laughs> right. Um, she is like just done. Yeah. And then she gets her voice back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it is uh, Footloose on the stage uh, June 21st through July 1st. Uh, if you would, uh, Nathan, tell our listeners why they should make it a point to check out Footloose. So um, this is just a great story about growing up and really... Um, I know Mark said it, a, I don't know, almost an hour ago now, but um, it's really a show about how adults can listen to children and realize that, you know, our generation really does have a voice. And it's just a real good story about friendship and love and forgiveness and a whole lot of great morals in there. How about you, Annie? I think it's about listening and about using your own voice. You know, among the questions I didn't ask them was uh, about their, their fashion choices for their <laughs> characters. But you guys are playing 80s characters who are probably a little bit trapped in the, the 60s or 70s, I imagine. Do you still have fun with your, uh, with your costume, being able to be the kind of a stern, uh, reverend figure? Well, fun, fun is certainly a word. Um, <laughs> That's correct. So, th <laughs> a word. so throughout, yes. throughout the whole show, I'm... It's basically dress pants, dress shoes, dress shirt the whole way through, <laughs> except there are a couple scenes where um, it takes place at our house in like the at middle night. of the night, so I am come out in my pajamas, yeah. but yeah. And so. I'm sure Vi's character is probably reflected in your oh, clothing yeah. choices she, as well. Um, I went to Goodwill, <laughs> and <laughs> I got a bunch of clothes, and I brought them back, and our director goes, uh, costume director, goes, these are really oatmeal tones plus some blue. I'm like, well... Vaya is very not outspoken, right. so, I mean, yeah. It works oh, perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> Great group of kids you got here, it yeah. seems like, Mark. Uh, what, what, is, what was your uh, goal going into, uh, you know, this uh, new high school level troupe that you put together at the school? Give kids opportunities, you know, and like I said, bring kids together. Have them learn from each other. Um, you know, Whitney comes from uh, a show choir background, so her, her dance ability is something that the kids can be learning from. Um, you know, that we've got just people, you know, um, Aaron's coming from a larger school than, I think, I think Sun Prairie is the largest, 600 in a three grade school, right? No, sorry, 601 class, that's right. Um, you know, so we've got that different experience, and then you know, Savannah's coming to us from, the entire school is a third that size. Like, it, it brings different perspectives. Savannah talks about, you know, doing junior shows. Um, I When I went to school, I went to a school about the same size as Savannah's there in Marcazan. We didn't do shows. There was no plays. There was no musicals. My senior year, we finally did a musical that no one's ever heard of. Um, so, you know, and providing opportunities. Um, that's what's happening over in Randolph. We've got um, a, a student, Maxwell, who's coming over. They don't do shows. They don't have they don't have the facility. I know the director has the desire to, but there's no nowhere to do it. There's no budget for it. So I'm giving opportunities to some of those kids. Um, and to put on a, on a quality thing. Mark, a reminder our listeners about uh, ticket prices and dates, if you would. Yeah, we're, we, 
got tickets between $10 and $14, depending on how close you want to sit. If you're a student, you can show up the night of for an $8 student rush ticket. Our shows are June 21st through July 1st, and we are at 219 North Spring Street, despite the fact that Spring Street is under construction. So um, you'll have to kind of loop around a little bit to get there, but um, that's one of the reasons to come see the show is the sense of accomplishment of finding the parking lot and being able to come see the show. It's a, it's a little bit of a challenge, but um, I'm pretty sure we're, we're going to get some signs up around downtown to make sure that people know how to get in there. And, and why why does the I'm sorry do, <laughs> I just said arrows pointing arrows, yeah. arrows. there will be arrows yeah. if not uh, uh, Vi will be standing out on the corner <laughs> directing <laughs> traffic uh, as needed uh, why should <laughs> why should the folks uh, out there uh, listening on uh, AM fourteen thirty WBEV and watching us on dailydodge.com, dot uh, com why should they make it a point to check out uh, uh, Footloose and see what these kids uh, have got to offer I think I'm gonna just take a quote from a bunch of people that I heard last year from Little Shop you're not going to realize that it's high school kids. It is that quality of a production. It's These kids are doing great stuff. They are young adults. I often tell them, like, I'm, I'm not going to treat you like a kid right now. I'm going to teach you, treat you like a young adult, like the young adults you are. Um, and, and they act like that, and, and they perform like that. So you're... I, I hope no one's got any hesitation that it's just high schoolers on stage. These aren't just high schoolers. These are very talented high schoolers. And, so. and it's better than the uh, the 1985 uh, version of Footloose? Uh, I personally like the stage version better, so... The, yeah. There is no Kevin Bacon, so <laughs> yes. if you're only in it for Kevin Bacon, I mean, I guess stay home, but... You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank our guests for joining us on this segment once again. Uh, oh, one more question for you. Yeah. Uh, I assume, uh, where's Ren? Ren. Ren uh, and uh, the uh, director, I assume you closely studied uh, the 2006 Beaver Dam Area Community Theater version of uh, Footloose starring Jay Wilkins, directed by Rick Ramirez, and modeled so much of what you did <laughs> after after that uh, just landmark production. I uh, actually <laughs> I don't know if you're being if you're goofing around right now, Craig. If I'm not mistaken, Footloose, the the original Beaver Dam production, um, I believe is one of, if not the highest grossing show that um, community theater did. Like it as I understand it was fantastic. I haven't seen any video of it, um, but you know, Rick and I are good friends. Um, I've seen the I've seen Jay's work and he's he's a talented Talented man. So um, I think we've got, I think the Burger Blast aprons and and some of that stuff. <laughs> we, we got a little bit of that of the the 2006 production in there, um, but a lot of it, you know, is is our own. You know, we want to want to forge our own path as well. We'll, we'll be so. looking forward to seeing Rick and Jay in the yeah. uh, in the audience. I think uh, I heard that they're having a. a cast reunion mm -hmm. yeah. beforehand they're gonna they're gonna get no together kidding. get dinner yeah. like the cast is getting together and then they're gonna come see our show so i'm looking forward to it i'm hoping that somebody out there reaches out to me so that i can maybe have the uh the cast uh my cast meet up with the bad <laughs> cast and like i don't know take jay and jose can take pictures together and be like two runs <laughs> you know, 12 years apart or whatever it is. yeah 12 years that's what yeah. it is i believe uh, right. uh no pressure guys so <laughs> enjoy it uh, thank you guys all very much for joining us on the uh, the program today. We thank do you. really appreciate it. Uh, again, uh, actors uh, Jose Pena, Whitney, uh, Whitney Stagger. I got, I got the last name right. Uh, I don't know how that happened. Savannah Peterson, Aaron Millville. Uh, also want to thank uh, Annie Friedel and Nathan Stafford, along with uh, director Mark Lefebvre. BDACD.org for more information. Absolutely.